If you're a fan of mixed martial arts, like I am, then you might have noticed that in recent UFCs, there's been a bit more striking and a bit less grappling. More fights seem to be ending as big slugfest, two guys with their heads down and just swinging for the fences, trying to knock each other out, than the more technical ground battles that were part of the early UFC. And based on this, you might wonder if grappling is still effective for the street, and if Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is still a good martial art for self-defense. Well, I'm a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt and a submission wrestling instructor, so I'm biased, so you got to take my advice with a grain of salt, but you should do that with anybody's advice. But I think it is very, very effective for the street. But we still have to look at why there seems to be a slight advantage to striking, or a relative advantage to striking, compared to grappling in the octagon or in uh, mixed martial arts events. And I think there's a bunch of reasons for this. The number one reason is that even the top level strikers, the guys who are out there knocking each other out, they already incorporate grappling into their training. They all do. In their training camps, they bring in high level freestyle wrestlers and Greco-Roman wrestlers to work their takedown defense against. And they bring in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts, high level guys, to work their submission defense and their positional escapes. So that means even guys who are strikers have already spent a lot of time working uh, their defenses against arm bars and chokes and uh, takedowns and bad positions on the ground. So I doubt very much that in real life the Joe Tough guy who tries to grab you and drag you out of your car and pummel you has had a training camp for this and brought in top-level collegiate wrestlers and top-level jiu-jitsu guys specifically to train for this. So a little bit of ground fighting experience on your part can go a long way to making you effective in a self-defense situation. But another factor that promotes striking in the UFC or any other MMA event is the use of gloves and hand wraps. Some people still think that gloves and hand wraps protect the head of the guy who's getting hit, but that's not the case. They actually protect the hand. How many times have you seen some young guy with his hand in his cast, usually it's his right hand, and you go, what happened? He goes, oh, I got into a fight and I punched somebody in the head and I broke my hand. Well, punching somebody in the head with your fist, unless you've done a ton of conditioning, tends to break the small bones in your hand, especially these two bones here. So wearing gloves favors the striker because it protects the hands of the striker relative to the grappler. and also. It's harder to, you know, to sink your gloved hand in around someone's neck. And if somebody just wants to stall, it provides a convenient hanging on point. So it's another th thing that gloves and hand wraps affect the fight and favor the grappler, excuse me, favor the striker. So back to real life, it's pretty rare to go to the bar and see some guy wearing hand wraps and gloves and all taped up and ready to go. And if you see this person, avoid them. In uh, in normal life, uh, unless you run into some really, really weird people, you're going to have bare hands, make it harder to punch, and, hard, and easier to choke. So another thing that really favors uh, strikers over grapplers in mixed martial arts is the introduction of rounds. Three minute and five minute rounds was a huge advantage to strikers because they were guaranteed, if they got taken down, they were guaranteed restarting at their preferred range, striking range, if they could just hang on and stall, they, they, they knew that they'd be getting another shot at it to, uh, to start at their preferred range. And related to that is a whole issue of stand-ups. If, if you manage to slow things down just a little bit on the ground, oh, the referee stands you up again. And you're even beginning to see referees break clinches now, again, trying to put people back in that striking range. It's all just part of the conspiracy to increase the amount of striking and reduce the amount of grappling in mixed martial arts. Compared to what would happen if you just took two people, threw them into a cage, locked the doors, and didn't open it up again until one person was unconscious or incapacitated. Uh, you want my suggestion? Sure. You want to stand guys up when they're being boring on the ground? No problem. Stand them up. But what happens when two guys are circling each other, dancing around, and nobody's doing anything? Well, I think they should stop the fight and put them down on the ground and watch what happens there. And I doubt very much it's going to happen, but Dana, if you're listening, I'm just putting it out there. Use it, don't use it, whatever you like. One 
final thing I'd like to talk about is selective promotion. There is a tendency to take and promote strikers over grapplers in the UFC, and that's because your average garden variety North American trailer park redneck wants to see two guys with their chins up, swinging for the fences, and some guy getting knocked the hell out and going down like a chopped down tree. That's what they want to see. So they're picking fighters who, who will give the audience that. Because as soon as fighters hit the ground, they know that those that uneducated component of MMA fans is going to start booing, or they're going to, more importantly, start changing channels. And they, they want to prevent that. So you want more proof that that's happening? Look at the fighters who are apologizing for submitting somebody or choking somebody unconscious rather than knocking them out. I couldn't believe it the first time I saw it, but it is happening. So in your self-defense situation, in your big street fight, your opponent probably won't have cross-trained with high-level wrestlers and high-level jiu-jitsu people. He won't be wearing gloves, nor will you be wearing gloves. Nobody's going to jump in and restart the fight on the feet if it slows down, and it's not going to be a three or five minute round. And there's no judges, no referees, and very often no audience. All of which means that in self-defense, the effectiveness and the importance of grappling goes up relative to striking. The bottom line is that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a martial art. It's a very effective martial art for self-defense. You don't, if you don't know anything about the ground, you don't want to end up there. But if you know even a little bit, the ground becomes your friend and you can use it to defeat a larger, stronger and hyper-aggressive opponent. That was proved long ago in the early UFCs.